Hey YouTube, this is a video on my power supply. It's gonna be um, just about the workings and some explaining some electricity stuff within the electro electrolysis system and HHO and everything. But yeah, here we I'm just gonna start off explaining my power supply. So over here, you can just see my wall plug. This just goes. That's what I plug into the wall to get the power to my cell. All right, that goes to a splitter on the end of that cord. You can't really see it too well. You still can't see it well. But on one plug that goes, in, the, the splitter just has two outlets on it. On one plug I go to um, this. This device costs around like $20 at Harbor Freight. It's called a router speed controller. It's great for um, changing the voltage in transformers. Um, now it's no variac, but uh, this thing is really useful in just controlling your cell. Um, so you can go from about zero volts, a little bit more than zero volts, to to 120 volts if you click this full over here. But yeah, this just changes the voltage, and at a constant resistance, if you change the voltage, it's going to change the current. So that therefore, I just change the output of my cell. Um, anyways, that goes to my. Um, I just plug the other side of this thing into my trans my microwave oven transformer this is called a MOT for short I rewired the second secondary um, I, yeah on this with three coils of 16 gauge wire each coil is rated at uh, 24 volts um, 24 amps sorry and so theoretically in a perfect world I'd get 72 amps out of this transformer but that's not going to happen because that thing heats up, uh, the actual transformer heats up, and other things are, go wrong, and you just can't get it perfect. Sorry, but this thing I can round, I can get like 45 amps without like messing something up too quick. I mean, if I was going for like two minutes, I could probably go to like 55, but you know I want to run for longer than that. Um, so those coils go to their each of them go to bridge rectifiers. Each of those bridge rectifiers are rated at 50 amps, and they do. I there are rumors out there, I guess, that you shouldn't do this because one rectifier will draw more current, and that rectifier, when it's drawing more current, will just it kind of gets in a chain reaction, and eventually one rectifier blows up, the next one does, and then a third one does, and you just have a bunch of smoke and a non-working power supply, and that isn't necessarily true. Um, I just have them all connected with one heat sink, and if as long as you have the amperage below what those things are rated at, um, each of them, then it's really not a problem. I haven't had too much of a problem. There might be like a two amp difference between each one, which is actually quite a bit, but it doesn't seem to. It's not really bothering anything. Like, it just kind of limits the amount of power I can put through it. And if I could tune this thing a little bit better, then I could probably get more out of this. But you know, I don't really need too much more. Um, and they, the outputs from those rectifiers are hooked in parallel, and each of them are connected to these lugs here. So, yep, those lugs go to some four gauge wire. This is meant for like car batteries. This is really thick. That's just one wire there. I don't know if you can see that. It's about the size of my pinky, and. Um, they go to an alligator clip that is rated at 50 amps, but I really don't think it, you should put that many amps through it because they get warm at 40. All right. Um, the other side of my power supply, I'm sorry I'm talking long. I just have a lot of stuff to say. Um, other side, from the splitter, the other plug goes to a laptop supply. This just outputs 12 volts DC. It's the easiest and cheapest way I found it get smooth DC at 12 volts to power stuff in my in my system all right um, this only this can handle around five amps worth of load so that's enough for me to run some fans some lights and my pump actually draws like almost two amps so that's a lot of it um, but I it can really it can handle what I put through it um, and then this just goes to like a little interface box Pretty much, I plug stuff in. These are the same plugs you'd find in the, the back of a TV. Um, that like, what are they called? I don't even know. But um, yeah, these are the. They just look like I don't know if you can see it, but like that. And 
I just plug things in. I can turn them on with these switches here. All right, and it's really handy on controlling what's on and what's not, and I don't have to really solder things, and it's not really permanent. Uh, I mean, it is, it's a permanent device, but my connections aren't permanent. I can switch things out and change stuff easily, and that's really handy. Um, so that's it for my power supply. And if you have any questions, this is the thing right here. It's the main component. It's a microwave and transformer. This is a really big one, actually. It took a while to find. <laughs> But um, it came out like a, a thousand something watt microwave, I think. It was really a big microwave. So if you want more information on the windings of this thing, I can give it to you. But I'm not going to put it in the video because it's just kind of, it's not necessary if you're not actually going to build it. Um, that's it. I will be posting a video on my HHO system over there. You can probably see it. It's all done. But I have had problems with my cell and I need to passivate it again, so I'm working on that. And I'll post a video when everything is complete and running well. Right now it's not running too well, so um, still working on it. I have some lights in there, it looks pretty cool. So thanks for watching and hope it's helped you.